Hello everyone, I'm Michelle Alvino, the MARCOM Administrator at Delta Track. Welcome to our webinar about tracking the temperature of seafood and introducing a unique technology for auditing your supply chain to comply with federal regulations. We'll start with a brief introduction and an overview of the Thermotrace TTI label, followed by our featured speaker who will discuss a series of tests performed by the University of South Florida. One test was to validate accuracy of the TTI. The second test compares degree minute data between TTI and a data logger. And the third compares TTI versus a data logger under typical shipping conditions. And after this, we'll take a couple of questions from the audience before we conclude. So just to give you a brief background on Delta Track, we have over 25 years of experience as a provider of cold chain solutions used for manufacturing, processing, transportation, storage, and handling of any temperature sensitive commodity. We operate under ISO certified quality management system and all of our products are calibrated against NIST traceable registered certified instruments. We work closely with our customers to provide innovative technology solutions to meet cold chain requirements and we know the importance of understanding our end users' needs so that we can keep up with current industry regulations to, and guidelines to recommend appropriate solutions. If you have any questions during the webinar, please type them into the question window on your screen and we'll collect them and answer at least a couple of questions at the end. And after the webinar, we'll send everyone a copy of all of the questions that were sent in along with the answers. So what is the Thermotrace TTI? TTI stands for Time Temperature Indicator, and the Thermotrace label is a non-toxic chemical indicator with each model having specific temperature threshold. The threshold is carefully calibrated melting point of the chemical, so when a label is exposed to this threshold, the chemical melts and starts to migrate behind the barcode. If the temperature goes below the threshold, the chemical solidifies and stops and if it goes above the threshold again, the chemical will melt and continue moving. So in this manner, we have an irreversible color change in the barcode, and it's measuring the accumulated temperature abuse above threshold. So basically, the label is responding to the ambient temperature around it, so it would typically be adhered to a carton or a package of seafood in a temperature-controlled environment, such as refrigerated storage um, or within a truck or a shipping container. The melting and solidifying of the chemical causes four possible barcode readings or events that the Thermotrace label can display once it's scanned. And a smartphone or barcode reader will only be able to detect one of these events at any given time, depending on the condition of the label, the time that the scan is made. So if a shipper forgets to pull out the start tab, the message would read not activated. If the label is activated and has stayed below threshold, the message would say, label activated. And if the label reaches the threshold, you would see a message saying, quality code 3. And the time accuracy for reaching the threshold is 15 minutes. And finally, the last event, quality code 4 message, would appear after four hours of accumulated temperature above the threshold. And this has an accuracy of plus or minus 30 minutes. And just to note also, these messages can actually be customized to say anything you want and the colors can be customized, and you can even use multiple languages. So on the right side of the screen, you can see the picture of the, um, the smartphone with the orange quality code 3 that would appear once you take the scan and the label has reached the threshold. So a few words about chemical indicators. They have been around for very many years and widely used in other industries, um, but the Thermotrace TTI is quite unique because it has a patented barcode technology. The barcode can be scanned with any smartphone or an industrial barcode reader, and then the data is transmitted to our custom web-based application, and this immediately sends the user a status message based on the label's condition the time it was scanned. And this generates a reply or an email or a text message alert, which can be sent to designated personnel like a QA manager or supervisor to alert them that there's been a temperature excursion. Messages can either be pre-configured or they can be customized. And labels can even be 
stuck to uh, consumer packaging so that a consumer could scan a barcode label at the point of sale and messages can be customized to tell them about the product they're about to purchase. So this is a very important supply chain audit tool because a label can monitor temperature of seafood products as they're sent through the supply chain and it would be scanned at multiple checkpoints along the way from the time that it's unloaded from the harvest vessel to processing facilities and cold storage, wholesale distributors, distribution centers and all the way to stores and retail um, and to restaurants. Every single scan would capture the serial number of the label, the date, time, location of the scan, the reader identification, and if the label was exposed to temperature above threshold. And users can even add their own delivery notes, take a photo of a damaged product. You can scan a secondary barcode, for example, a lot code or a product code or a customer order number. So this, this means that all the information is now linked to that one label serial code. The barcode has a serial number and it links all this information to that specific carton, package, or shipment. And it can tell you where and when temperature abuse occurs so you can track down who had responsibility in the chain of custody at the time of the event. So this is an important compliance tool and the serial number of the Thermotrace label should always be written down on shipping documents or a bill of lading so it can be associated to a specific customer order or a shipment before it even leaves the dock. And this is an important step because now you can provide verification that those specific products have not been exposed to abuse between the shipper and the receiver. And the records would, could be used for FDA inspections and also to prove to the, uh, that the products were delivered without any temperature abuse. This validates that the processor or shipper and the carrier did their part to maintain the cold chain. So now um, I would like to turn the presentation over to Dr. Ismail Yusal, and um, he he has uh, is with the University of South Florida, and has conducted a uh, series of studies on the Thermotrace TTI label, and he received his Ph.D. in electrical and computer engineering from the University of Florida, and continued his academic studies as a postdoctoral research fellow at the UF Center Research Center for Food Distribution and Retailing. And at the University of South Florida, he's an assistant professor of electrical engineering and director of the RFID Center for Applied Research. He concentrates his research on applied applications of radio frequency RFID for pharmaceuticals, healthcare, cold chain, remote environmental monitoring, mm -hmm. and smart sensory data algorithm design. He's done various studies for the Department of Defense, Cephalon, Tiva, Florida Department of Transportation, Abbott Labs, and several others. And with that, I would like to turn over the presentation to Dr. Yusel. Thank you, Michelle, and hello, everyone. Um, so today I'd like to talk to you about a study that we did at the University of South Florida to validate these TTI labels that Michelle just told you about and compare them to existing um, uh, more traditional data loggers. So uh, before I begin, um, and I think I might need control to pass to this next slide. There we go. So a quick outline about the, um, about the presentation. Uh, I'll spend the first 30 seconds just to tell you about myself and some of the research studies that we do. Uh, I'll tell you about the objectives of the study, uh, the test protocol that we used, and then we're going to talk about some results and then obviously conclude with some remarks. So um, a quick word about the university. I'm with the University of South Florida. We are a very applied research focused university. Uh, we actually ranked 15th worldwide for the number of U.S. patents granted in 2013. The numbers are not out yet for 2014, but looking at the number of patents that were filed and granted, uh, we, we hope to beat that number. Uh, we had a little over $400 million in funded research grants in 2013, and we were ranked the fifth fastest growing research university in the U.S. for the past decade. So um, I am directing the RFID lab for applied research as part of the College of Engineering. My earlier research concentrated on wireless sensor technologies 
such as radio frequency identification specifically for transportation applications, distribution, cold chain management, pharmaceuticals, and healthcare. Currently, I'm focusing more on using data analytics and machine learning to advance these topics, such as smart supply chain management, temperature mapping, prediction, optimization, and also classification of different activities for uh, healthcare settings using wireless sensors. Uh, we had a lot of sponsors over the years, uh, DOD, Walmart, USDA, Abbott, Abbott now, now they're called AbbVie, uh, Teva Pharmaceuticals, Florida's Department of Transportation, Florida Technologies, and recently DeltaTrack. So I want to show you a very quick video of how TTIs work. I think Michelle did a great job in explaining you how, you know, the whole chemis chemistry works and how the application or the use case works. This is a time-lapse video. And let's see if this is going to work. And you should see, I would, I would want you to focus on the right-hand side of the barcode. You'll see that when the, the barcode is, act, the label is activated, this chemical starts to diffuse into these um, channels in the actual barcode. So when you scan this with a, a, a barcode scanner, every time you scan it, depending on the status of the accumulated temperature abuse, the chemical will display a different, uh, or the barcode will include a different information based on the advancement of the chemical. So uh, the objectives, we have three objectives for the study. First one is to validate the, uh, the calibration temperature behavior of these two labels. We have a 55100 label which has a zero degree Celsius threshold temperature and a 55101 label which has a five degree Celsius threshold label. So we validated their behavior at three and eight degrees Celsius respectively because their calibration temperature is defined as being three degrees Celsius higher than their threshold temperature. And now we wanted to look at how these labels behave at, at different temperature set points and using a metric called degree minute you know, performance, we wanted to compare these to more traditional data loggers. And I'll tell you what degree minute uh, performance metric is when we get to that part of the presentation. We also, as a final objective, we wanted to see how these labels would, would perform in a more uh, realistic uh, shipping temperature scenario and using ambient temperature uh, tests how, how, or how their characteristic behavior will change uh, when we use more realistic uh, profiles. So for the test protocols, we use similar protocols to Delta Tracks internal testing to validate these labels and to create the degree minute curves at different temperatures. In the lab, we had a Thermotron S-Series benchtop temperature chamber with a 2800 controller. This, this chamber is validated for a wide range of temperatures ranging from minus, 80, uh, minus 18 degrees Celsius all the way up to 110 degrees Celsius. The protocol is very simple, so let me quickly explain what we did. So the first thing is to stabilize the water bath at that set temperature point. To do that, we leave the water bath in the chamber for a prolonged period of time, and then we measure the water temperature using a calibrated thermometer. This is important because the temperature uh, chamber sensors might be at different locations, so we have to make sure that the water temperature is at a temperature point that we want. And now we precondition the TTI labels at a freezer overnight prior to activating these labels. Later, we picked five of these labels and attached them on the back of five Delta Track FlashLink data loggers. These are more traditional data loggers which samples uh, temperatures and record time temperature stamps at every one minute interval. We started the data loggers, we activated the labels, we placed them in airtight vacuum sealed bags before submerging them in the water. When we submerge them in the water, we use these almost robotic looking, you know, secure grass holders to make sure that they were submerged in the water for the entirety of the test. Finally, uh, obviously we put the water bath in the chamber, sealed the chamber, and every 30 minutes open the chamber, pull the water bath out, and scan the TTI labels. We did this for every 30 minutes uh, before the test time reached 3 hours and 30 minutes because at that time, we start to expect some of these labels would transition into this final stage, QC4. So that's why we started scanning them every 15 minutes instead after the 3 hour, 30 minute uh, time. And finally, we assume the test is completed when all five labels have actually made the transition to stage QC4. Once this happens, we take the container 
out, we take the loggers out, and we download all the temperature data into a computer and in an Excel spreadsheet for further analysis. Here is a very typical test temperature profile that you can see for, in this case, 6 degrees Celsius test. You can see that the water bath temperature is pretty stable, around 6 degrees Celsius. You can also see when the tags were activated and when they started to transition, when the labels are activated and when they started to transition into the final stage. You can see that some transitioned 15 minutes or so before the 4-hour mark, some transitioned uh, about 30 minutes after the 4-hour mark, which falls within the, the manufacturer's specs of 4-hour plus minus 30 minutes for indicating temperature abuse over the threshold temperature. So here are the results of the validation study. Uh, as you can see, we've done it for both labels, 55100 and 55101, and each instance, all the five labels we tested have actually validated successfully, and you can see that in every instance they pro progressed into QC4 at either four hours or slightly before or slightly after um, in, in, in both cases. Let's talk a little bit about the next objective, which is the degree minute testing. So the first question is why we, do we do this and what is, what is this really? So as you know, temperature abuse is cumulative. So what does this mean? It means that there is no going back, right? So if you have a perishable product and if you expose this product to a temperature condition which is not its ideal storage range, then you would have some damage occur to the product which is irreversible. So if you have a shipment of strawberries and if you expose them to 20 degrees Celsius for a prolonged time, their shelf life will be significantly less, right? So in order to measure this reduction in shelf life or quality, uh, there is this performance measure called the degree minutes. And what it is, is it measures the accumulated temperature abuse over a specific period of time. So let's talk a little, let's take a little bit uh, a detailed approach to see how this calculation is actually done. So imagine that we stabilize the water bath at a set temperature. What we do is we measure the average number of minutes it takes for these labels to reach the final stage QC4. And then we calculate degree minute as the difference between the water bath temperature and the threshold temperature multiplied by this average time period. Now let's take a, a numerical quick example. So let's say if we test these labels at a water bath which is say 10 degrees Celsius and our threshold temperature is 5 degrees Celsius. So the difference is 5 degrees Celsius. So if, if we store these labels in this water bath for 40 minutes, we have 5 times 40 which is 200 degree minutes, right? So another way to achieve the same accumulated temperature abuse would be to store these at a 6 degree Celsius where the difference is now only 1 degree Celsius, but instead we store them for 200 minutes. So they are roughly the same amount of temperature abuse that happens in, that, in these different periods of time. So this is what the degree minute tells us. It's an objective measure. I'll proceed to the next slide. It's an objective measure to compare uh, a label to a logger by just looking at the average log temperature value instead of individual temperature values as a measure of accumulated temperature abuse. Okay? So here are some results from our tests. So this is for the zero degree Celsius label. As you can see with 55100, both the labels and the loggers agreed in all the different temperature set points that we tested this label for, and they all provided roughly the same amount of degree minutes when we did the test. The same thing happened for 55101 and for all the different set points we, we, sh we have shown that the labels and the loggers agreed on the accumulated temperature abuse on the labels. So then we asked ourselves, so what about real transportation? So every time you do a study like this, you'd like to go beyond these synthetic profiles like the water bath, the stable temperature, et cetera, et cetera, and you want to use more realistic, albeit simulated, but it's at least more realistic temperature profiles. So one, one way to do this is to use the same chamber, but instead, instead go between two temperature points to simulate some kind of a cooling cycle you would observe in a typical transportation truck. Right? So we looked at some sample data logs from actual seafood shipments, and now we wanted to simulate a temperature abuse situation and see how the labels performed. So I think a picture tells a thousand words. So here is the temperature graph that, or the temperature profile that we used. So as you could see, the temperature chamber 
changes its temperature between about 12 degrees Celsius and about 8 degrees Celsius, right? So this could show uh, a, a cold, a cooling refrigeration equipment failure. Uh, it could be that the equipment is trying to cool the, the transport truck down, but there might be a problem with the, the, the you know, container sensor, there might be a bias in the sensor. So whatever the reason might be, this is a temperature abuse. If you define your shipping conditions to be ideal below 5 degrees Celsius, this is a temperature abuse scenario for your particular shipment. And you could see here that every label that we tested, we're able to determine the amount of temperature abuse, again, within that 4-hour plus or minus 30 minutes uh, time interval. Is, is there a more quantitative way to see what's going on? Yes, we can use degree minutes once again. So in order to calculate degree minutes in this case, we look at the mean kinetic temperature. And in this case, it's around 12 degrees, 11.8, 12 degrees Celsius. And you could see for each label on the second row of this table, for each label where the transition has happened. So the first label took 250 minutes to reach QC4. The second label took 265 minutes to reach QC4 et cetera, et cetera. So we average this time, right? So we average this time, and then we multiply this with the degree difference of the measured temperature and the label's threshold temperature. So that way we come up with a degree minute number for each label, okay? And what we did was we compared this degree minute label we, op we obtained with this ambient temperature testing with the manufacturer reported degree minute number for 12 degrees Celsius stabilized temperature test. And we saw that at a 12 degrees Celsius stabilized temperature test, the actual degree minute was 1561, which meant that it spent, on average, 223 minutes to reach QC4. So when you look at the percent difference between the two, we can see that in real shipping scenario with the real profile, we were as much as 93% in agreement with the stabilized temperature tests, which shows that these labels are suitable for more dynamic temperature change profiles as well as stable profiles. So uh, a few words in conclusion. So we found out that on average, both 55100 and 55101, when they were subjected to these validation and degree minute tests, they all met the specification of four hour plus minus 30 minute QC4 transition time when they were exposed to temperatures beyond their threshold temperatures. When we went one step further and looked at a more realistic temperature profile, we, we have shown that the, the same type of behavior is preserved. And uh, when we simulated a typical seafood temperature abuse scenario, uh, all labels we tested actually indicated the temperature abuse at, the, at their expected time. So as, as last words, um, we wanted to see how the TTL labels would perform and also how they would perform compared to data loggers. And obviously, there are you know, inherent differences between labels and loggers, as in the loggers have battery power and labels are passive devices. But their performance from an accumulated temperature view standpoint is very similar, almost exactly the same. TTI labels cost significantly less compared to traditional memory loggers. And they're passive devices, which means that you don't have to maintain them. You have to change the batteries on a traditional data logger. You have to make sure the batteries are OK when you're sending them to long shipments so that you don't lose the, uh, the compliance uh, you know, interval in that shipment. So they don't require maintenance, which is good. They're human readable using a smartphone app. So when you scan these barcodes on your smartphone screen, you can see what the status of the shipment is. And uh, it also records the data when you scan, the time and the, the data when you do the scan. They are compatible with a very wide range of smartphone hardware, uh, and they don't really require any expensive readers or any specific hardware, unlike some other competing technologies like RFID loggers, which are wireless loggers, but they do require uh, either expensive readers or some proprietary uh, hardware to access the temperature information on the loggers. They also have application-enabled cloud support, which means that you can have on-demand access to the, the, um, the stage or the status of these products whenever you scan the labels at different uh, you know, checkpoints in your supply chain or your distribution chain. And this is, not, this is uh, unlike more traditional loggers, which doesn't have this support until they reach the very end point of their uh, transportation. 
So uh, thank you for your time, and I guess at the end of this webinar we'll be taking some questions. If you have any questions, please do let us know, and I thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. Yusong. Um, I wanted to uh, remind the, uh, the audience that you can continue to send in your questions. We'll have time for a couple of questions now, but um, at the end of the webinar we will send a follow-up email to all the attendees with a list of all the questions and answers. But uh, we do have a couple of questions that came in. And the first one for Dr. Yusal is, um, they're asking, can we replace our data loggers with the Thermotrace TTI label? That's a good question. And my answer is, in many cases, yes. Uh, in a lot of the specific, uh, you know, cold chain uh, or different types of perishable supply chains, in a lot of the time, what you're mostly interested in is in accumulated temperature reviews. This could translate into a quality loss or a shelf life loss. So yes, for any application where you're more interested in the temperature distribution over time and how it affects or impacts your perishable products, may it be seafood or strawberries or anything else, you could just look at the, the status report from the label and have an informed or make an informed decision on whether or not to accept the shipment or what to do with the shipment if the quality or shelf life loss is significant. So all those things you could get from the TTI label. Thank you. Uh, so the next question we have is uh, one of our audience is asking if this label can be used um, specifically on vacuum packed fish fillets. Uh, okay, another good question. And the answer is uh, yes, mostly yes. And I have to say as a disclaimer, obviously, I'm not a regulations expert on seafood, but I've done a little bit of research. And I found out that actually the FDA seafood regulations, they clearly define a specific temperature point, which is the 40 degree Fahrenheit, as the critical temperature for bacterial growth on foods. So, and as you know, one of these labels that we tested, 55101, actually has a 41 degree Fahrenheit threshold temperature and the, you have QC3 and QC4, two different stages, right? So if the label is in QC3, it means that yes, your shipment was indeed exposed to temperatures that were beyond 40 degree Fahrenheit or 41 degree Fahrenheit. And if you see a QC4, it means that they were actually exposed to, this, to these temperatures in a prolonged period of time. So for any shipments where there is a prolonged temperature abuse over 40 degree Fahrenheit, 55101 label should be able to tell you at the time of receiving or you know at the time of receipt of these goods. You can also look at QC3 indicator to see if it has ever been exposed to a temperature threshold that's beyond 41 degrees Fahrenheit. So to answer your question, uh, yes, you could you know use this with vacuum seafood, and the the status on the label will tell you the amount of temperature abuse that has happened beyond the FDA specified 40 degree Fahrenheit critical temperature. Thank you, Dr. Yusso. So uh, before we conclude, I just wanted to make a few brief announcements. We will have a follow-up webinar, the second webinar in the series, and currently the University of Alaska is in the process of running a field trial to validate Thermotrace TTI labels in seafood shipments under various conditions. And so we'll have a follow-up webinar to discuss the results of this study. And we'll, send, we'll be sending all of you an email invitation to let you know when this will be. And also, if anybody's attending the Seafood Expo Seafood Processing North America in Boston, we will have a, uh, the TTI available for you to look at at our booth there, as well as our other cold chain solutions. So I'd like to invite you to visit our booth at the show. And finally, here is my contact information and Dr. Ussel's if you have any further questions. And also at this point I wanted to mention that we will, including in our email, we will have a link to the recorded webinar and the answers to the questions, as I said earlier, is, uh, including the ones that we're not, we didn't take on air. And we'll also, you'll also be able to share this with your colleagues uh, once you have the recorded webinar. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining, and this will conclude our webinar for today.